That's the number eight, eternal security. Page number 18. Lesson number eight, eternal security. Number one, eternal or everlasting life. Eternal or everlasting life. That's your, your phrase. Letter A, God promises to give us eternal or everlasting life. God promises to give us eternal or everlasting life. John 3.15 says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All right, letter B. The definition of the word. So let's talk about what these words mean. Everlasting means it'll last forever. That's pretty self-explanatory, right? Everlasting means last forever. Eternal means without end or never ending. Uh, you have, you know, you've heard the word like terminate, mean to end something. Eternal means it'll not terminate, it'll not end. So everlasting means it'll last forever. Eternal means it'll not end, without end or never ending. So it's two different ways of saying the exact same thing. Number three, so eternal life or everlasting life means we will have life that will last forever or life that will never end. Letter C, eternal life begins the moment you believe. Eternal life be begins the moment you believe or the moment you got saved. John 3.36 says this, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. The word hath means you have it. You possess it, okay? Some people will attack eternal security and they'll say, because the eternal security of the believer means that once you're saved, you're always saved. You cannot lose your salvation. We're going to talk about that in depth in, the, in this lesson. Some people will attack the eternal security of the believer and they'll say, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, God gives you everlasting life, but you don't get everlasting life till after you die. So once you die, if you lived a good enough life, then he'll give you eternal or everlasting life. But again, John 3.36 says, he that believeth, that's the faith, on the Son hath everlasting life. So you have it. You possess it the moment you believe. So it's not something you get later. It's something you already have. Number two, uh, how this conversation may go when explaining eternal or everlasting life. So again, you're already at John 3.16, right? Because we just got done explaining the gospel. Then I would just shift into, let me show you something else from this verse. Notice John 3, 15 and 16 says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the way that I explain it is the way that I explain to you right now. I'll say, you know, the word eternal means it'll never end. The word everlasting means it'll last forever. God says he wants to give you eternal life. God says he wants to give you everlasting life. And if you want to, you can show him, because you're already there in John 3, right? You can just show him John 3, 36, which is the last verse of that chapter, which says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And I'll just show him, look, the Bible says that God wants to give you everlasting life, eternal life, life that'll last forever, life that'll never end, and it begins the moment you believe. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And sometimes, and here's how I explain eternal security. And, uh, you know, you can do it however you like, but let me, let me explain to you what I do. I just really emphasize, uh, all, sometimes I'll say to people, now, we're not talking about living on earth. I'll, I'll say, you know, j just so you understand, we're not talking about living on earth like some sort of immortal. What it means to have everlasting life means that when you die the first death or the initial death, you won't die the second death of being cast into the lake of fire, but you'll go live with God for eternity. That's what we're referring to. You won't experience the death of the lake of fire. You'll go to heaven and live eternally with God. And I'll, I'll say to people, you know, let me ask you a question. Let's say God gave you everlasting life starting right now. Eternal life starting today. Life that will last forever. Life that will never end. When will that life end? And sometimes I got to tell people, like, I'm not, I'm not, like, setting you up here. I'm just asking, you know, when will that life end? And people are just like, well, it's never going to end. And I'll say, you okay, you know, would it end five years from now? Well, no. Would it end a thousand years from now? No. And I'll say, well, let, let me ask you this question. You know, just hypothetically, I don't think you'd ever do this, but let's just say that God gave you everlasting life starting right now, Right? Eternal life starting today, life that'll last forever, it's never going to end. And let's just say that five years from now, you walk in a bank and you rob the bank and you kill somebody. You think God would take away your everlasting life? And then I just stay quiet. Let them mull that over. Let them think about that. 
Now, mo a lot of times people are going to say, some people are going to say, well, yeah, I mean, I think he would take it away from me if I killed somebody. And, I'll, and then I just, I just come back with a question. And notice, Jesus asked a lot of questions. And sometimes it's better to ask a question, let somebody figure something out themselves and to just tell them. And then I'll just say that if they say to me, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, if I kill somebody, I think God would take it away. Then I'll just say, well, let me ask you this. If God takes it away five years from now, did it last forever? And just let them think about that. What's the answer to the question? Well, no, it didn't last forever. It only lasted five years. So can God take it away? Now, at this point, they're either catching on or you're going to have to explain to them what you're saying. But I'll say, let me show you a verse, okay? Titus 1-2 says this, in hope of eternal life. In hope of eternal life. Now listen, here's your hope for eternal life, okay? Which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. See, God cannot lie. If God promises you eternal life, then guess what? It's eternal life. God promises you everlasting life, then guess what? It's going to last forever, no matter what you do, okay? And at this point, you want to try to explain to people that we're not, we're not saying that, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to get ahead of myself, but, but let, let's, just, let's just go on. You're, you're going to re read the passage in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, promise before the world be end. You're going to reveal the truth, explain it to them, and then you're going to review the concept. You, and he, here's what you need to understand, and, and here's what you really have to explain to people, is this, is, is a few things. First of all, a lot of people have this thing in, this, in, the, in their minds where they think like, oh no, God forgives me of my past sins and my present sins, but if I do something really bad in the future, then he might take away my salvation. Here's what people need to understand. When Jesus died on the cross for your sins, he died for all of your sins. Past, present, and future. In fact, when Jesus died on the cross for your sins, all of your sins were in the future because you weren't even born yet, right? So he's already forgiven you of your sins. He's already paid for your sins. That's how he guarantees everlasting life. And I explain to people, you know, um, well, let, let me give you some thoughts on eternal security. Number three, some thoughts on eternal security. Page 19, number three, letter A. Eternal security teaches, number one, our salvation is secure because God promised it would last forever. Our salvation is secure because God promised it would last forever. Number two, this means once saved, always saved. Once you're saved, you're always saved. People sometimes use this term to mock us. They'll say, oh, you're one of those one saved, always saved. Never somebody says that to me, I'm like, amen. Yeah. Once you're saved, you're always saved. Because God cannot lie. Because God promised eternal life. Letter B, next page. Believing in eternal security does not mean we teach people it's okay to live in sin. Believing in eternal security does not mean we teach people it's okay to sin. If someone doesn't believe in eternal security, they are not saved, okay? Now, let me, let me explain some of these statements, okay? Number one, believing in eternal security doesn't mean, we're not telling people, just do whatever you want, okay? The Bible says this, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap. On this earth, if I live in sin, if I do wrong, if I just do whatever I want, I'm going to sow bad things and I'm going to reap bad things. The Bible says that God chastises. The Bible says that God, that God disciplines his children. We're not saying you can do whatever you want and there's no consequences. But here's what we are saying. No matter what you do, you cannot lose your salvation. No matter what you do. Because here's what a good father does. A good father disciplines his children. A good father doesn't abandon his children. Do, do, does that make sense? When you got saved, you got born again into the family of God. He became your heavenly father. He's going to discipline you. He's going to spank you. He's going to chastise you to get you to go down the right path. But he's not going to kick you out of the family and send you to hell because he's not going to go back on his promise. But here's what you got to get. Someone who doesn't believe eternal security is not saved. And here's why. Because if you believe I'm saved, you know, as long as I fill in the blank. As long as I don't kill somebody. As long as I don't commit adultery. As long as I, you know, sometimes people, I get asked a lot about this idea of suicide. Brother Stucky did a good job uh, explaining this. The, the whole thing of suicide is easily explained if you just ex thoroughly explain eternal security. Because here's the thing, if I believe I am saved unless I commit suicide, then guess what? I, I'm, I'm, I'm depending on myself. Because as long as I'm depending on whatever, as long as I don't do this, as long as I don't do that, as long as I don't rob a bank, as long as I don't stop coming to church, as long as I don't commit suicide, then your salvation is dependent still on you. You're still trusting in your works. Does that make sense? Uh, so if someone says, no, you can lose your salvation if you do anything, then they're still trusting in what they are doing. So we have to make sure we explain. And this is one thing that, you know, a lot of soul winners will not explain to our security. I was taught 
that you get somebody, quote unquote, saved, and you get them to pray or whatever, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, and then you explain internal security afterwards. But people have to be right on internal security. If they still think, like, if you explain everything to them and say, no, 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 you're a sinner, you deserve to go to hell, Jesus died for your sins, ask him to save you right now. And in their minds, they're still thinking like, oh yeah, Jesus saves me as long as I don't kill somebody. Then they're, de they're still depending on themselves. So you got to thoroughly explain eternal security and make sure that they understand it, all right? So uh, let me help you out with some, some of the references. If, you, if you're at John 3.16, you can write a number 10 in front of John 3.16. A number 10 in front of John 3.16. And next to John 3.16, you can write Titus 1.2. Next to John 3.16, you can write Titus 1.2. And, uh, and then you can go to Titus 1-2 and write number 11 in front of Titus 1-2. And next to Titus 1-2, you can write Romans 10-9. Because that's the verse we're going to go to next, Romans 10-9. So number 10, John 3-16. Next to John 3-16, Titus 1-2. Then number 11, Titus 1-2. And next to Titus 1-2, we're going to do Romans 10-9. Uh, 